it's Coach Tori, and this is Raising Runners. We talk running, fitness, mental health, and so many more topics. As the founder of a youth running program, I approach all of our conversations with our youth athletes in mind and kind of have a focus around those things. But as you will see, we are finding that all of these topics relate to runners and people who like to move and do fitness or anything like that um, relates to everybody. Check it out. It's Coach Tori. I am here alone again today. It has just been so busy trying to schedule guests and things like that. So there will be some guests coming up. There also will be um, some episodes where I am just reviewing um, written in comments like I did with um, one of the running training plans podcasts. Um, But today it's just me and we are talking about flow state. Um, I've just been kind of more into a lot of the like mental side of running. Um, I don't know, I was feeling inspired after the grounding exercises, um, that I recorded just because I think like all that stuff is so simple and easy and can be done so quickly, but also like kind of underrated. We don't always think like, how can we really master the mental side when, it does so much for us, right? Like so much of running, it really is in your head. So I thought we would talk about flow state. Um, and this applies more to endurance runners, which I think is probably more of the people that listen. It's probably not a bunch of sprinters because we're not usually talking about, um, stuff related to that too much, but so we are talking about flow state kind of, what is it? Um, how do you get into it, how it can help your running, how it can help your running. Um, and then just a little bit, uh, some like more info on that. And we will talk about that more later. I'm going to try to get, um, a meditation expert or someone like that to talk to us about flow state and meditation and all those things again, related to endurance runners. So here we go. Uh, what is flow state? Um, also I think it's referred to as like being in the zone. Um, I think that is for the longest time what I knew it as. Um, I think the first time I heard flow state was in college in, I don't even know, some like extra, not an extracurricular class, but like an extra class that wasn't like super related to anything. Um, And the professor kept talking about flow state and something similar to that. And at first I had no idea what he was talking about. I was like, that sounds crazy. And I'm like, oh, that's like a thing that happens often for people. Um, So the term flow state describes a mental state in which a person is completely focused on a single task or activity. Um, They're directing all of their attention towards the task. They do not experience many thoughts about themselves or their performance. Um, Some people refer to this as being in the zone. Um, Yeah, so this is kind of just like another definition. In positive psychology, a flow state, also known as being in the zone, is the mental state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process of the activity. So for people who listened to the grounding exercises, you kind of know where I was going with how that got me to here. Um, the grounding exercises, especially when you're, you know, relating it to running, um, we were really talking about uh, stopping all of those like continuous thoughts of doubt and, you know, any, any negativity or whatever, that's just coursing through your mind while you're running. That's going to help not help slow you down, but it's going to slow you down um, and not to be helpful in your running. Um, that's what the grounding exercises were for was to get you present in the moment to stop those train of thoughts. Um, and then you can move on to something more positive. So that's kind of where I was that led me to this. Um, because when you are in a flow state, you're not having all of those thoughts. So you would possibly need to do those grounding exercises to get into a flow state, but we'll get to that. Um, so let's see, I think a lot of us know like what being in the zone is. Um, I think more people now talk about flow state than um, they did before I had heard of it until I was in college. Um, you may have experienced a flow state at some point in life. It's that sense of fluidity between your body and mind where you are totally absorbed by and deeply focused on something beyond the point of distraction. 
time feels like it has slowed down or sped up. Um, it kind of really depends. Uh, your senses are heightened. You are at one with the task at hand as action and awareness sink to create an effortless momentum. Some people describe this feeling as being in the zone. So obviously I'm reading continuous definitions of this. I'm not just repeating myself for fun. Uh, this is flow state and it's accessible to everyone, whether you're engaged in a physical activity, a creative pursuit, or even a simple day-to-day -day task. Um, and we're going to talk later. Uh, flow state really is like, what is the word? But it goes along with endurance activities. And like I said, not so much sprinting just because um, the length of time, you know, you're starting, stopping. Um, it really works well with things that you're able to do continuously. Anything you read about flow state, they mention endurance type sports, they mention the creative pursuit, something that you can really immerse yourself in. Um, and usually it's going to be something that takes longer than like 30 seconds or something like that. Um, when you're in flow state, your mind's usual chatter begins to fade away. That was all those like negative or positive, really just those like running thoughts. Um, you're no longer having those. Um, you're placed in a non-distracted zone. The feeling that would consume you under normal circumstances like hunger, fatigue, aches, pains melt away. And all of that matters or all that matters is your dedication to your craft. Um, so again, this kind of further explains why flow state is great for endurance athletes. Um, you're not thinking about being hungry. You're not thinking about being tired. If your feet hurt, um, how far you've gone, how much longer you have to run. Um, all of those things in flow state really make it easier to complete, whether it's a race or a long workout or whatever it is, because um, you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. Um, and it's usually present during engaging and challenging tasks. And a lot of the other things I'm going to read later are going to talk about the balance between um, how engaged and how challenging the task is. Um, because if it's too hard, um, it's not going to be easy to get into a flow state. And if it's too easy, it's also not going to be easy to get into a flow state. So there really is that balance. Um, and so like talking with running, um, it's going to be harder probably to reach a flow state when you are just starting out running or if you are recovering from an injury or something that like it running is really hard for you at the moment. Um, it may be harder to get into a flow state. Um, same thing though, too, if like you're doing a really easy run or something, you may also not feel like you're in a flow state. Um, so there is, there does have to be a balance between if it's too hard, too easy, um, kind of there with getting into a flow state. Uh, let's see. Oh, and an important note, it's different from the focus and loss of time when you're watching TV. Um, psychologists like to make that distinction. And especially like now, thanks to streaming services, we can get lost in what we're doing um, for hours and hours and hours. And that's not going to be the same as flow because you're not really engaging in a task. And that definitely doesn't have the same element of it being challenging. Um, but I do think that it can be like a similar type of time warp. Um, if you're trying to think like, oh, did I really get into a flow state in my run? Um did it feel like time was passing differently than it normally would? Kind of like if you were watching hours and hours of your favorite TV show, that may be it. Um, so that kind of explains what flow state is, right? It's that, I almost don't want to say like hyper-focused state, but um, it's just kind of a different state of awareness and being um, where you are able to get fully immersed in what you're doing. You're not having those continuous running thoughts. Um, you're not really thinking about other things like eating, drinking, how long you have left, how long you've been doing this. Um, you're really just like, I'm running, right? And you're just running. Um, so that's really what flow state is. And then how do you get into flow state um, or even just a focus state that is needed to achieve goals like long runs or things like that? 
Um, it said it can be challenging to get into the state of focus and stability of mind. Um, me personally, I'm someone who can really struggle with focus and focus, focus and attention to one task. Um, and I constantly have a wandering mind. Um, meditation and mindfulness have been really challenging for me. Um, I remember taking a mindful yoga class. First of all, yoga is really hard for me too. Um, just the slowness of it, I I find challenging. Um, but I took a mindful yoga class in a strawberry field, which was really pretty. And it was like fun to do yoga outside um, with a friend. But I was very confused why like we had to pick a strawberry before class started. We did like, we had to focus on the strawberry. We smelled the strawberry, tasted the strawberry. It was very confusing. So I like really struggled with mindfulness. I get it a little more now. I understand meditation. I've done a lot of those things. I can feel it helped my brain. Um, but it is hard to focus for a lot of people. Um, but that is what we need to easily get into a flow state. Not just say like, if you're a distracted person or you often have wandering thoughts, like it's not possible for you. It's just, you're probably not the person who's every run they go out on or every time they're coloring or whatever it is, like every time you're doing some kind of activity, you're probably not getting there with your brain because you may be thinking of 800 other things. Um, here's a quote from the co-founder of Headspace, which anybody knows it's like meditation, mindfulness resources. If we can learn how to apply focus moment to moment, then we'll see that play out in our longer term goals. Um, and flow really can help us achieve our running goals. So I thought it was kind of relevant here. Uh, mindfulness is being present and engaged in what you are doing in the moment, free of distractions, judgment, and aware of thoughts and feelings without being caught up in them. So again, this kind of speaks to the grounding exercises, being mindful, being present. Um, all of that is going to be related to getting into a flow state so that your runs are going to feel almost effortless. More on how to get into flow state. Um, so some things need to be happening for that to happen. Uh, you need to care about what you are doing. Um, so you have to care about running. If it is running, you have to want to be running. Um, it can't, you know, it's not going to happen for things that you don't want to do things that you don't like doing. Um, so it's kind of important too. uh, you really have to evaluate, like, how do I feel about my running? Um, because that can really affect it too. And like I said before, it can't be too easy or too hard. Um, and you need to adopt a process thinking um, instead of outcome thinking or process-oriented goals versus outcome-oriented goals. Um, so not just like, I need to finish this eight-mile run, but like I'm doing the run because I'm becoming a better runner. I enjoy running this route. Um, just thinking about it differently, right? Having those different goals of like, I'm running to become more fit for the things I want to do. I Am I explaining process goals, right? <laughs> um, but not thinking of just the outcome. Like I need to do this to PR my next 5K. That's probably not going to get you in the right mindset to have um, easy access to a flow state, right? Um, so thinking of the process, you are working hard to become better at this. You are working hard because you enjoy it. You're running this eight mile run because you like to run eight mile runs. It's important for you to do it for your training, um, anything like that. So not just thinking of outcomes or the finish line, it's the process. Um, other tips are doing something you love. So kind of, like I said, you have to care about what you're doing. Um, most of the time you're going to get into a flow state with it's something that you love to do or care about doing, uh, creating a ritual. And this also is great for running because a lot of us already do some kind of warm-up routine, or if it's not a warm-up routine, it's, I put on the same shoes every time I have an outfit. I like to wear when I go on a run, I make sure I have my watch set before I go. So you have some kind of ritual, even if it's not like stretching drills, all that stuff. Um, identify peak times 
for your run. So peak times of focus or peak times of not distractedness. Um, so if you're trying to get into a flow state with your run, um, not doing it when you're rushed, not doing it when you're exhausted and you think that, you know, your brain just wants to turn off because that's not the same thing. Um, so trying to do these runs during a time that is good for you, good for your brain. You're not hungry. You're not worried about lunch. You're not thinking I have to get back to work, anything like that. Um, and then of course, eliminate distractions. So I don't know if we talk about it in, um, the stuff I have written up now, but, um, another thing that's mentioned is obviously your phone can be very distracting. So for people who are really into like their data watching the entire time that they're running, uh, maybe leave the watch at home or turn off Strava or whatever it is. It's going to keep dinging in your ear of like, you reached this mile. This was your pace. This is your heart rate. This is the zone you're in. Um, so focusing on those things is not going to help you get into a flow state for those runs. So if you have a run, like an interval workout or something where you need to just constantly be checking, uh, if you're done the time or if you're done the distance or whatever it is, like, that's probably not going to be the run to try to do this too. Um, and I wouldn't recommend like not bringing your phone, just like safety reasons and stuff like that. But I mean, there are ways to minimize distractions for your run. Um, also like not doing a route that you've never run before. So you don't have to be worried about, did I turn the wrong way? Do I need to go this way? Oh, I need to watch out for this pothole that just popped up. Um, kind of like knowing where you're going is also going to eliminate distractions. Um, and then like if for people who listen to things, I believe they recommend like, music. I think it's repeating songs. Um, but also there's like a lot of playlists you can find that are good for like meditation or, um, like flow state thinking. Um, and it's going to be kind of repetitive. I don't know what the right word is. I want to say electronic, but I don't think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, like there's not words to it. So like, those are going to be distracting words that you want to sing along with. That's going to refocus your brain on those things. Um, but like background kind of music or like soundtrack kind of music is more what they would suggest, um, in terms of just kind of setting yourself up for a better potential to reach a flow state while you're running. Um, and then meditation kind of, like I mentioned already can help. So possibly not meditating while you're running, but meditating before you're running to really set your brain up for a good space of like being stable, being in control, knowing where you're at. Um, like those kinds of things are going to help you, um, get into a flow state for your run. And then benefits with running or just like benefits of achieving flow state in general. Um, we kind of said it already, but if you're in a flow state, running is not going to feel as hard. You're not going to worry about, oh, I'm hungry now. I'm thirsty now. My foot hurts now. I'm tired now. Um, so you'll most likely be able to run longer um, distances or just longer time for your runs. And a lot of us, that is what we're really trying to achieve. So that's obviously going to be a benefit. Um, when running, we're using energy and when doing longer runs, well, most runs pretty much, right? Uh, you don't want to be wasting energy. So when your brain is in a flow state, you're not wasting as much mental energy as if you are planning the rest of your day, worrying about whatever you were worrying about, um, thinking through whatever the podcast you're listening to is talking about. So there are benefits besides just like the energy like of your body and how you're not feeling how tired you are, but also you're not exhausting your brain um, by like running through these constant thoughts. Uh, high levels of concentration. So obviously that's a benefit if you're able to concentrate and be really concentrated or really focused. Uh, I don't think anybody can really argue that that's usually an issue or not a benefit. Um, so it's not always needed with running to be like highly concentrated. But um, if you're thinking about like a more um, like tactical trail run where concentration um, is really important, like focusing on like what the trail looks like, following the routes, all those kinds of things, like being able to have a high level of concentration is important um, for certain kinds of runs too. A sense of clarity. Uh, your mind and body know what to do without thinking about it. Um, having to actively think 
like I need to pick up this leg. I need to move like this. I need to be going faster. Again, it's all going to be taking up energy. So having a sense of clarity of like, I'm out here running. I know what I'm doing. My brain is just like continuing to tell my body to keep going forward. Um, you're not having to think so much about what you're actually doing. Uh, lack of obstacles. That's another benefit of being in flow state. Um, and there's like the mental obstacles, right? And that's huge. Um, our thoughts are generally, uh, well, thoughts can cloud the mind, um, like things like doubt, worry, all that stuff. So when you don't have those mental obstacles, again, you're not just not wasting energy, um, but you're also not worrying about all of those things too. Uh, and when you're in a flow state, you have generally good feelings. Um, in the moment, good feelings are going to make your run more pleasant and feel better and easier to complete. Also, it allows for longevity. When we have more runs that feel more positive, we're also more likely to keep doing it. So um, it doesn't only help with the run that you're in, but it's going to help you with the next run that you have, um, help with burnout. You're not just feeling mentally fatigued by all of your runs. You're actually feeling good by the runs that you're having. So this is just more facts about flow state. Um, and like I said, again, we are going to try to have a guest on to talk more about flow state and meditation and how that helps endurance athletes. Um, but just again, me taking some info from a quick Google search. Um, so who experiences flow? Well, I think I kind of mentioned before that like all those things were achievable by most any person. Um, so anybody can, but there is a capacity. Um, oh, but the capacity to experience flow can differ from people. Uh, studies suggest that those with autotelic personalities tend to experience more flow. Um, so it's people who tend to do things for their own sake rather than chasing some distant external goal. Uh, so I kind of mentioned that too before about like, the process versus outcomes goals. Um, so it's like that intrinsic motivation versus the extrinsic motivation. Uh, you're doing stuff for yourself. You're doing stuff because you enjoy doing it. You like doing it. You want to get better at it for you. Um, those kinds of people are usually going to experience flow more easily. Um, the type of personality is distinguished by certain meta skills, such as high interest in life, persistence, low self-centeredness. Um, in a recent study investigating associations between flow and the five personality traits, researchers found a negative correlation between flow and neuroticism and a positive correlation between flow and conscientiousness, uh, which makes sense for what we know about mindfulness and meditation. Uh, neurotic individuals tend to be more anxious and self-critical, which is not gonna set you up to be in a good headspace to reach a flow state. So that kind of just tracks with what we talked about that we know about how you can achieve a flow state. Um, that also kind of tracks with me saying I struggle with mindfulness. Uh, I probably don't get into a flow state very often doing a lot of things because I am often thinking of all the other things, right? So I probably fall into the more neurotic end of the spectrum there. Um, state of flow has rarely been investigated from a neuropsychological perspective, but it's becoming a focus of some researchers because I was trying to find um, some more science-y info for everybody. Um, and I did find some articles, but again, I think we'll save those for when we are actually talking to some experts about flow state. Um, so there have been some studies that have found um, an association with decreased activity in the prefrontal cortex in a flow state. So the prefrontal cortex is an area of the brain responsible for higher cognitive functions, such as self-reflective consciousness, memory, temporal integration, and working memory. Um, it's an area that's responsible for our conscious and explicit state of mind. So again, I think that kind of makes sense if we think about it from all that we've talked about already about flow state. Um, you really don't need to be self-reflective uh, in flow state memory is not really going to help you at that time because that would just be thinking of other things that aren't what's happening right now. And 
the big thing about flow state is that mindfulness being present um, and just being in the moment of whatever you're doing. However, in a state of flow, this area is believed to temporarily downregulate in a process called transient hypofrontality. This temporary inactivation of the prefrontal area may trigger the feeling of disorientation of time, loss of self-consciousness, and loss of inner critic. Um, again, that all tracks. Uh, there's actually one runner that I work with who describes one of their runs as, at least once they described their run, as they were unconscious for it. And when I first read this, I was like, oh my gosh, they like work so hard, they became unconscious. Uh, but then further description was just talking about how they don't remember the passing of time. So it sounds like they reached a flow state during that run, um, but just didn't know how to like articulate that. So yeah, the distortion of time is a big thing and really not being aware of all the other stuff that's going on. Uh, the inhibition of the prefrontal lobe may enable the implicit mind to take over, allowing more brain areas to communicate freely and engage in a creative process. Um, and when we talked about flow in the beginning, we said like endurance sports often are something people um, will experience flow with doing, but also like creative activities as well. Um, it's been a hypothesis of dopamine reward circuitry since curiosity is highly amplified during flow. Um, and these are things, again, I think we'll talk more when we get an expert to talk to us about flow later down the line. Um, let's see. Oh, another interesting thing. And again, I would like to talk more with someone else about this as well. Um, but there was a study where students were asked to participate in activities that would induce flow either in a team or by themselves and the students participants rated flow to be more enjoyable when in a team rather than when they were alone they found it more joyful if the team members were able to talk to one another um, this finding was replicated even when the skill level and challenge were equal um, this is also kind of interesting and I think relates to running as well because everybody who's listened to me talk before knows that I'm obsessed with the running community and the fact that we all love running together, blah, blah, blah. Um, but running really is big on like running with other people, running as a community. Um, and so that kind of tracks with it is more fun to be in a flow state even when you're with other people who are also experiencing a flow state. Uh, let's see. The a final study found that being in an interdependent group while experienced flow is more enjoyable than one that is not. Uh, so if you want to get more enjoyment out of your flow, try engaging in activities together. So go run with somebody on a super long run, and it'll be even better than if you did it by yourself. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then there's just talk about intrinsic motivation um, when you're doing something because you love it. It's the highest intrinsic motivation is a flow state where self-consciousness is lost. Uh, one surrenders completely to the moment and time means nothing. Again, that's really just explaining flow state again. Um, and we talked about intrinsic motivation being a big part of that. Um, we already talked about doing something you care about, doing something that you love. Um, and really that whole self-consciousness thing is important. So not having those thoughts so much. So that is a little intro into flow state. Um, again, we'll have an expert talking about meditation. We'll probably try to get somebody to talk a little bit about some of the studies for flow state. Um, also, I am not a big meditation person, but I'm going to try to find some meditations maybe that are specifically geared towards running or something like that to kind of give some suggestions of um, meditations to possibly listen to while you're warming up to maybe even get your brain a little more ready uh, to get into a flow state for your next long run. So working on some of those things, um, because like I said, I really am in a space where I want to focus on the mindset, mental side of running, all of that, because I do think that's so important for helping kind of all runners be their best. Um, I promise I'm not completely off track with the mini series that we have been kind of like back and forth going through on optimizing running for very busy people. Um, I feel like I'm, unfortunately, I picked a really busy time to, to do that because it was super relevant to me. Um, 
but I am working on that still trying to schedule some more guests to talk about like sleep recovery, mindfulness, mindset, um, some of the other things that we talked about as well. So, uh, that is still happening. It's just going to be like a mini series that's stretched out, um, a little longer, but, uh, we are working on that still. So there will be more info on that. Um, make sure you check out YouTube. If you're not watching this on YouTube, um, you don't have to check out YouTube to watch this video again though, but I am slowly as I am super busy trying to put more, um, resources on YouTube for everybody. So things about like the grounding, the mindset, the flow state, um, trying to get more training plans up there in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, if not training plans, just a couple more things about different workouts. Um, so working on all of that, uh, yeah. So let me know if there's other videos, resources that we, uh, you think will be valuable. Uh, and I am still working on some stuff for you too. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you rate, review, subscribe, all the things that you can do for a podcast that you enjoy listening to. Make sure you check out social media, our website, any of those things. If you have questions, comments, interview requests, feel free to email me at merikeerunclub at gmail.com.